All right, and I think with that, we can hand it over to Megan to start. All right, thank you. All right, welcome to MAPES Negotiations Town Hall. I am Megan Dayton, I'm the statewide president, and I'm also a member of MAPE Negotiations Head Table. Uh, we just wrapped up our first day of push week with a marathon session of negotiating with MMB, Minnesota Management and Budget. And at the moment, I'm feeling a swirl of emotions. Uh, I'm feeling frustrated at their continued dismissal of our proposals and ideas that we have thoughtfully prepared and presented as part of our bargaining packages. I'm feeling the push pull of energy and exhaustion around the continued fight for reasonable, fair and equitable proposals that will benefit public employees and the Minnesotans we serve. Most of all, though, I'm excited for what's to come this week. Push week is historically a time for new initiatives to be born, for headway to be made on updating some antiquated contract language, um, and also for management to see how powerful the union is when we stand together. So thank you for coming together alongside us tonight and joining us on this call for updates. Seeing your names and faces on the screen gives us the support we need to keep up this fight for a better Minnesota for all. We've got about 250 people on the call tonight. That's so awesome. It tells us that we are uh, fighting in the right direction for the contract that each one of you deserve. So I'm going to turn it over to our co-chairs for the negotiations team, Adam Novotny and Carolyn Murphy, for the update you're all here for, how push week day one went. So take it away, you two. Thanks, Megan. Uh, yeah, my name is Adam Novotny. I'm a co-chair of the negotiations team. Uh, and Megan is right. It's been a long day. Uh, and we are far from done. Um, MMB today presented a PowerPoint in response to the medical and dental proposals. Uh, so far, CGIP is currently proposing a 3.6% increase in premiums. Uh, the Union Coalition has agreed to increase out-of-pocket costs for emergency room visits. Um, but MMB does continue to say no to all of our remaining proposals. And they are pushing the actuarial value proposal, which would set the actuarial value of our uh, healthcare plan at 92%, locking us into increased premiums and out of pocket cost uh, increases, essentially taking away our right to bargain all future premiums. Uh, we've made it extremely clear to them that we will never accept such a proposal, uh, as that greatly diminishes our negotiating power uh, and the capabilities we have to bargain. Uh, the proposal gives the employer the ability to adjust the plan design in the even numbered years uh, without consulting any of the unions. Uh, frankly, it's a shameful proposal that they would even bring it up uh, and ask us to just hand over our bargaining power. Uh, the strengths of CGIP and the CGIP plan over the years has been the ability for the employer and the unions to come together and to bargain a plan design that is meaningful for our membership. Uh, we are just simply not interested in the actuarial value proposal, and it's a non-starter for us. Carolyn? So we also responded uh, to MMB's point that was made regarding our rich benefits set. Over many years, the unions in the state of Minnesota have made the decision to give up increases to wages to maintain health insurance benefits at affordable levels for our employees. We are concerned that we are seeing these sorts of proposals in a time when we are coming through the tail end of a pandemic and when a new variant is starting to rear its head and in a time when healthcare reserves are extremely high. The dissonance is truly disconcerting. If the state of Minnesota truly wants to be an employer of choice, proposing language for insurance that would strip bargaining ability as well as make premiums out of the reach of its employees uh, not be the direction of the state is seeking to go. Megan, uh, do you want to share more about our initial COLA proposal? I definitely do. I think people are going to be interested in this one. Um, so, so uh, yeah, thanks, Carolyn. We, um, our COLA is our cost of living adjustment. So we arrived at our COLA proposal by talking with you all, our members, the 15,000 people and the families that they represent, that we represent. 
We've researched uh, current economic conditions. We've researched previous cost of living adjustments. Uh, and we've also looked at the budgets and economic conditions that were in the contracts of those cost of living adjustments. We know that wages and an accompanying cost of living adjustment are an important part of recruitment and retention for the state uh, and ensuring that our members are compensated for the work that they do. We also know that wages in this contract set a standard that workers across the state should be compensated for persevering through a pandemic and continuing to deliver on services to the people of Minnesota. We looked at the statewide average weekly wage that was calculated by Minnesota's Department of Labor and Industry. This is a measure that is, that is used to determine workers' compensation. Um, and that, that measure increased by 7.69%. Uh, and that is an unprecedented adjustment that we haven't seen in a very long time. So the cost of living is going up significantly, and we think that our wages should go up along with that. The budget this year is healthy. We know there's an operating adjustment. The state's been saving money by shutting down offices, and we also know about the hiring freeze because we've all been picking up two or three jobs um, that, that we would normally uh, not do. So there's room in the budget, and a portion of that should be used to support the state's most valuable resource, its workers, you all. In times of a budget crisis or political gridlock, through no fault of our own, we made members fall behind. We rely on times like this, healthy and improving forecasts, solid budgets for contracts with fair wages that keep us from falling further behind because of inflation and healthcare costs. Because we have done what was asked of us, because we've delivered to the people of Minnesota, and because we're seeing large increases in cost of living, we are proposing 5.75 cost of living adjustment each year of this contract. So it would be retroactive to July 1st, 2021 of this year would be a 5.75% increase in the same next year in 2022 on July 1st. We have heard both Governor Walls and Commissioner Showalter, who's the commissioner of MMB, They've both made their commitment clear that employees should not go backward under this administration. This is a labor friendly administration, they say. The proposal that we put forward today ensures that that promise is kept to each one of us. So if you're as fired up as we are all about this, then listen close to what comes next. Claudia? There you go. Sorry, unmuting technical <laughs> difficulties. Um, I'm Claudia Hochstein. I am a negotiator. Um, I come from Region 301. Um, I work at the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Um, and, you know, I am here to talk to you about the rally that we're having uh, on the Capitol steps on Wednesday night. So there's two more days of negotiations before the all member rally. It'll be happening uh, regardless of rain or heat uh, or where we are in negotiations with MMB. I hope it's a celebration for all the progress that we're about to make, but if it's not, this is our chance to show MMB that we are united as a union that stands behind our reasonable proposals and demands that MMB meet us along the way on our journey to continuing to be an employer of choice that values its workforce. This rally is so important because it sets the tone, not just for this contract, but for the future. We're building together as a union. The rally starts at 5 p.m., so hustle on over from your basement office, your agency workspace, or your alternative work location, and join us on the lawn right below the front steps of the beautiful State Capitol building. You'll hear from several members who will share their own stories that support our remaining proposals around wages, health care, telework, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and uh, the rights for temporary unclassified workers. Bring your colleagues. Bring your family, bring your friends, and most importantly, bring your will to fight and your desire for a MAPE contract that works for you, for your fellow MAPE members, and for the future. Almost 800 of you have already RSVP'd. I'm so excited, and I cannot wait to see that front lawn full of MAPE members showing up in solidarity to support their next contract, our next contract. We cannot be ignored. We won't be silenced. We won't accept the nonsense that we're being offered. Share the link that's uh, dropped, being dropped in the chat. Um, if you haven't signed up, 
visit it, sign yourself up, talk with your coworkers, talk about it between now and Wednesday, and tell everyone what's at stake. The importance of this contract for our salaries, for our health care, for our working conditions. I can't wait to see so many of you on Wednesday at the Capitol, and we will show our power together. So uh, back to you, Megan. Thanks, Claudia. I will definitely be there on Wednesday and I'm going to bring my kids with me. I'm going to drag my husband with me. I hope he's on the call because he's a MAPE member. And if he's not, he's definitely going to be in trouble. But uh, we are all going to be there on Wednesday. It's going to be hot. So we'll have bottles of water. And I'm really excited to see all of you there to show our numbers and our power as we fight for a strong contract. So thanks, Claudia, for that exciting invite for um, to Adam and Carolyn for the update too. I'm sure a lot of you have questions now. We've just kind of dropped that information on you about the 5.75 and a bunch of stuff that's happened today and what's coming up for the rest of the week. So um, I wanna stress that there are still so many unknowns in the process for how the rest of push week will shake out. Um, but, but we do welcome your questions, all of your questions. So please either raise your hand, um, not like I'm doing here, but in the uh, Zoom thing, push the raise raise hand button, um, or type your question in the chat if you're unable to raise your hand, and we'll do our best to get to all of them before we close out at 5:30. So we've got about 15 minutes of questions, and I believe Caitlin, our uh, Mape organizer here, is going to moderate the Q and A. I am. Thank you. And I know that there's also the question and answer feature, so you can type in there. I know some of those questions are being um, um, answered as we go. Um, if you are not sure about, I see some like little logistics on the rally. I'm just going to clear those out of the way. You can find that at MAPE.org. You can follow the link that was put in the chat for the parking. There is a link within that for parking. Um, I, I hear that you might be able to, after 4.30, there's some better options for parking um, around the capital area, uh, but that's where you can find logistics. Um, so I'm going to kind of scroll through here and try to capture some of these questions and pass them to some of our, our, our leaders here. Um, is the gov well, let me start with this one. Is the governor aware of our rally? Will anyone from his staff be there? Can anyone, um, Leah, would you be willing to speak about our, um, our communication with the governor, where we're at with that? Yeah, sure. Um, the governor's office is aware um, that we are having the rally. Um, there has not really been a formal invite um, to um, to the governor to attend, but of course he would be welcome um, if he if he or any of his staff wanted to come. Great, thank you. Um, there's a question here about um, increase for out of pocket amounts. Um, have we agreed to increase in out-of-pocket amounts now? Um, Pete, do you want to answer that? Uh, I don't have, let me, let me go pull it up. I gotta go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, we have, we were, we were kind of like building the plane as we were flying today, like preparing for this. So things were, are happening like right now. Um, Somebody had asked if, if the state had responded yet to our uh, proposals, and we are actually um, hoping to hear from them later tonight. So we had uh, passed that uh, cost of living adjustment proposal right before this town hall. So we do not know yet um, what their response is. Um, who at MMB actually decides what the state will offer in accepting contracts? I just wanna make one point here that when we say MMB, we are referring to the employer and not our MAPE members who work at MMB. So I just wanna clarify that because it's absolutely true that we have fantastic members working um, out of MMB and, and doing great work. They are not the ones making the decisions of, uh, as employers about what will come to the table. Um, you know, where we, I don't know if somebody wants to um, take that question. How do, do we know how they decide what comes to the table? I can I can respond to what I know, and it's somewhat of a black box that we have tried to get into this time around. Um, that they that uh, the employer, uh, the the whole uh, chain of command over there, has been pretty opaque about. Um, what we do know is that we are at the bargaining table with some um, some of the 
labor representatives from MMB, they're enterprise-wide folks from MMB, and we do know that the Deputy Commissioner, uh, Deputy Commissioner Batson and Commissioner Showalter say that they are watching very closely, but they are not at the table. Um, so, so I don't know who ultimately makes those decisions um, on what they can agree to with us. But that's that's what we've been able to um, find out from from the black the black box that is MMB this year. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> there's a question here: uh, Is our is our cola uh, five point seven five in line with AFSCME's? They are making their wage proposal now, and it is. Megan, do you want to? Yeah, just a little bit of extra context that we have um, this time around tried to be in in coalition with with AFSCME, um as much as possible, because while we represent between 15 and 16,000 state employees, so does AFSCME. But when we put us together, obviously, it's 30,000. It's twice that much. Um, and if we can go in with somewhat of the same perspective, then we are twice as powerful. Uh, so we have just given our opening proposal, uh, that 5.75 for both years that we told you about. Um, I don't know that AFSCME has actually passed theirs across the table, but they will pass the exact same number for both years. So we are in lockstep with AFSCME right now, which is actually really exciting for me. Caitlin, can I jump in with the... Uh emergency room copay. Uh, so yes. the, the agreed, agreed upon increase is uh, $100 for level one, $125 for level two, and $150 for level three. All right, thanks. Um, okay, I have a few other questions here. Uh, this one is a little more general. I'm going to take a step back because it's a little about the process. What has been the role of the mediator? So the mediator's role is very much to land the plane. Um, they, they're uh, not necessarily, they're not picking sides. They're not trying to, um, you know, necessarily uh, tell us what we need to do, um, but they do try to move the conversation along and they try to um, get a deal that both sides can agree to. Um, let's see. We can go back. I know you had Viga. Uh, you had asked about the increase of out-of-pocket amounts, and that is what um, Adam just referred to. Um, there's other things on the table uh, that have not been agreed to still. There are some proposals from um, the employer about uh, increasing out-of-pocket expenses. There have not been agreements to those. Okay, um, give me a moment here. Um, there is a sort of a detailed question here about the health insurance. Pete, I'm wondering if you might want to um, try to take a stab at it if I read it out for folks. Sure. Okay. How did the premiums for the actuarial value proposal, 92%, compare to current premiums? Sure. So for just so folks to, to give a very basic about um, what this um, uh, about what this proposal would do, what it would do is glo it would cap the global amount percent of, of uh, cost sharing for the employer and give them the ability to shift costs onto us as out of pocket costs without negotiating them. So in the in the near term, they have their their uh, costing on it would be that it would be a slightly lower premium increase 2.5 instead of 3.6. But that would be because they would uh, dramatically increase out of pocket costs because we're already above 92% right now in the, what they pay for I think we're at about 93. And they would have to reduce that by kicking it. So the schedule that they gave us as an example shows um, hundreds more dollars out of every line of of out-of-pocket costs on every tier on every service so essentially what it would do over time is continue to grow the pot of costs out of pocket without us being able to negotiate them uh because they want the idea is they want to set a fixed a percent for themselves so they never have to go higher than it because when we bargain sometimes we bargain well enough that they cover a higher percentage than we do and that we're able to to keep our costs low and they want to permanently change that 
Thank you. Yeah, it's a pretty complex um, figuring out how that, how that happens. Okay. Um, are there, and Adam, I'm going to ask you to answer the next one. Um, are there addition, are adding additional steps for increases for those of us at the top of our pay grid being proposed or discussed? Yeah, thanks, Caitlin. I was actually just about done typing up that response. Ah, so perfect. <laughs> um, yes, they are being discussed. They were being discussed. Uh, we did bring this as a proposal. Uh, at, at this point in time, we have dropped that proposal uh, due to the extremely high cost and the belief, uh, management's belief that retention of people who are at the top scale, top of their pay scale is not a problem for them. Um, they don't see the numbers of people at the top of their pay scale leaving. Uh, therefore, it is not a problem that they are willing or apt to address um, because they don't see it as an issue. Thank you. All right, let me get through some of these other questions. And just, um, just so you know, if we run out of time, because we, we are actually going back into the room with the employer soon, so we aren't going to be able to um, extend this. But if you don't get an answer to your question, please know that you can reach out to negotiators. You know, we, we, they will try to respond as best they can to your staff. We'll do our best to get back to you and help you understand what's going on uh, and give you updates. So um, let's see here. Um, what will happen with some of the things that were brought up in some of the listening ses sessions, such as returning our pay equity with others, unions who saw greater increases in the last contract? Anyone want to try to tackle that? I think more globally, um, you know, a lot of the listening sessions, there was a whole lot, a lot of process for the team to look through those, um, to write proposals around some of those, to decide on where the, you know, the most priority laid based on what they were hearing. And Adam, go ahead. Yeah, I can take a stab at that too. I, mm -hmm. I think it is, it is probably a corrections question mm. in regards to the wage compression with uh, the corrections officers rather. Um, I, I believe that we did bring a uh, wage equity proposal in regards to the compression that that created. Uh, to be completely honest, I, am, I do not recall off the top of my head where that went. Um, I, I guess I would ask at this point for uh, whomever wants an answer to that question to reach out to me directly uh, and I will get you an answer on that. I do not have it off, off the top of my head. It, it does exist um, and, and we can track it down. I just don't know right now. Okay, thank you. I think you're probably right. That was the direction to go there. Um, all right, um, has MMB withdrawn its anti-mate proposals? Who wants to take a- Most of them. <laughs> They, they have uh, taken the uh, bumping rights seniority bit off the table. Uh, they have pulled a handful of their uh, proposals that would limit uh, steward rights and uh, MAPE access to new employees, those sorts of things. Uh, those have been taken off the table. Um, I, you know, I, I guess you could argue there are still anti-MAPE proposals on the table. Uh, they want to introduce uh, additional steps of discipline um, and things like that, that, that I would very much consider uh, anti-worker at the very least, but probably anti-union as well. Great, thank you. Um, okay, here's a question about the COLA. And um, so have we ever received a COLA above 2.5%? Yes, I can answer that one too. There's a little bit more to that, but I think that's kind of the crux of it, Adam. Do you want to take a stab yeah. at it? Um, so looking at the top of my head, uh, not top of my head, I'm reading off a document. Uh, 2007, we received three and a quarter percent. 2008, we got three and a quarter percent. 2013, we got three. 2014, we got three. Uh, and then uh, since then, it's been 2.5 uh, or just under. So uh, the, the short answer is yes, uh, several times in the three to 3.5 range. Thanks. In the, okay, that's in the, in the last uh, two decades. Yeah. 
I'm running a little short on time. So I'm going to jump to a couple here and I'm sorry if we don't get to all of them. Um, so Juneteenth, I'm going to respond to you real quick. I know some people have asked whether we are going to be have that as a paid holiday. The, the state legislature needs to act on that in order to do that, correct? Am I right, team? I think that was what we need them to make it. Okay. Um, all right, and then here's here's a good one. Um, so a couple of people have asked, what happens if we don't come to an agreement this week? Um, I'm wondering, you know, is, will there be a strike vote? Um, Pete, you want to you want to answer that one? Sure. So just so folks are knowing how the how the process works, um, we will be uh, we have a rally, and that is our uh, is our main tool this week to try to move the ball. If it's not moving, it's just a challenge publicly to uh, the governor um, to step in. We will continue to pass proposals and to push MMB to move. Um, if at some point MMB tries, uh, says um, this is the best we can do, um, this is the end, this is our last time we're going to pass something, um, then the team has to decide uh, together whether that's good enough to send on to, to you know to, to try to keep pushing them to respond again later in the week, um, or whether or not uh, then to either recommend uh, either send it on as a recommendation to, to that this is what we're going to get and this is what we can get if it's good enough and or not if it's not. And then um, after the board looks at it, the membership votes on it. So the answer is, is that the contract eventually, the tentative agreement, any tentative agreement comes to you. Um, and uh, and then the, the way that MAPE decides on work stoppages on strikes is by a rejection of that or, a, or an acceptance of that, um, uh, of that tentative agreement. So uh, it's a democratic process and, uh, and we will have more um, conversation about where things go with the week and other options on the table in terms of political pressure and action. Um, but that won't sneak up on any of us. Um, so the, 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 the state will likely try to get it wrapped up this week and we would love to do that too, but we also want to make sure that it's a fair deal. And so that's what we're trying to balance. Um, and we'll be in communication with you all if we think it's a fair deal and we'll be in communication with you all if we think it's not a fair deal. Thank you. Um, so rally on Wednesday, if you're interested, we are also um, making signs and you're welcome to stop by MAPE uh, tomorrow, 5.30 to 7.30 here in our offices. Um, there'll be some supplies. Um, we also have invited the press to come on Wednesday. Um, and we will also, uh, yep, we have speakers, um, several members who will be speaking, um, and we've got some chants. And if you've got some ideas for chants, that's awesome. Um, you know, we can we could probably use those too. And we will have we did get some shirts, so there's MAPE shirts for the taking. Um, you know, first come first serve. We have we have a thousand, so hopefully we will run out. Um, <clears throat> and um, I think I, I think I have to stop there actually. Um, yeah, I think we are at time, right? So that is it for Q and A today. Um, yeah. I think Adam has mentioned and Caitlin as well. You can email any one of us that are here today, or there's the the action at mape.org inbox um, that will get forwarded to the appropriate person to answer your questions. So if you have outstanding questions, please reach out to us. Um, we are that's what we're here for. We're here to answer your questions and make sure to keep you all. Uh, up to speed with what's going on. So um, what we just heard, we actually just heard that the state intends to respond to our cost of living proposal in the next half an hour. Um, so stay tuned to our social media, to our website, uh, watch your uh, inbox for updates. If you're interested in receiving live updates uh, and wanna be the first to know when we have a tentative agreement or any other major movement this week at the table, uh, you can sign up for our texting list um, so our team and staff can include you on our personal text uh, tree or organization thing that we've got going on so far. So the link to that is in the chat now. Um, don't forget to sign up for the rally, 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 rally. Uh, and if you haven't written a letter to the governor yet, please take a minute and send one via the link in the chat as well. Um, if you'd like to share what a strong contract means to you and your family, uh, we're collecting those sentiments too. I think those are strong messages to share with um, the folks across the table from us to personalize the things that we're fighting for. 
Um, so thanks again for taking time out of your evening at the end of your workday on a Monday to join us. We had just over 300 people total join us today. So that's super awesome. Um, we're just getting started, but uh, know that regardless of the outcome this week, MAPE is a strong union that will always have your back and we're strongest when we stand together. Um, so take care, have a good night, and we will be in touch with each one of you soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you upstairs, team. <laughs>